Hey guys, and welcome to part two of our Q&A video, I guess, you know, journey. Um, so like I said last video, I was going to break down part one into two videos, so part two, yay. So let's just get into these questions. What's the worst phase you went through? I would say the worst phase I went through was kind of like my, um self-sabotage um phase where it's like you know i just went through every color of the rainbow for my hair um i wore way too much makeup i i drank too much like it, it was just a really bad phase um it was literally the worst phase i went through I, I you know i did some really not cool things um i was very nasty and a hard person to be around and you know that was one of the life lessons where like i learned that i couldn't push down my trauma that i had to like you know come face to face with it and work through it and not pretend that it didn't exist because you know i did go through a lot of stuff um who do you make happy i would hope you know, certain family members that, you know, are happy with me, uh, friends, of course, and, um, you know, extended family. I really hope those are people I make happy. Who are you most happiest around? I would probably say, um, really good friends of mine, those Will, Dave, um, they're pretty cool dudes, you know, no problems. We know, you know, we bicker and stuff and we might have disagreements, but we're pretty chillax with each other. I mean, we could talk to each other about anything. Um, they're my, you know, supernatural Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit gurus that we just like talk and stuff. And yeah, it's just a really good group of like circle of friends. There's Sean... I mentioned him, we we dated back in the day, but, you know, we're still really good friends. I mean, we're really chillaxed around each other. We don't, you know, pretend to be somebody we're not, you know, we don't have to worry about anything. We can just be ourselves and very chillax. And then, of course, there's my best friend, B. Um, you know, we've gone through some stuff that changed both of us, I guess. And, you know, I could still be happy around him. It's just a different type of happy, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, especially but with my friends, like I can really be really chillax and, you know, myself with. Did you ever have, do you have any good memories with your ex before the abuse started? So yeah, I would say like prior to the like abuse started, we had really good conversations. Like, now looking back, of course, I know it was him just trying to get his hooks into me. But, I mean, at the time, it was really good to just talk to somebody and, like, have somebody, like, that seemed that they really cared about you, you know, and they wanted to hear what you wanted to say. And those are some good memories. But, like, you know, I don't hold on to those memories and be like, oh, well, you know, we had that. So, like, you know, the abuse gets trumped by the ba uh, the good things. Like, definitely not. Um, and it's not something, like, I fantasize about or whatever. It's just, like, something that, you know, was nice that happened at the time. But, you know, shit happened and now we move forward. What's the best uh, piece of advice you can give someone that experienced any type of abuse? I would say definitely listen to your gut feeling when it says, get the fuck out get the fuck out. Like, don't wait for your perfect moment and green light to go out and get away. Do it as soon as you hear that voice. I know you might struggle against your heart and your mind that might say, oh, we can stay or we can change the person. You know, it doesn't happen all the time. It's my fault. If your gut says get out, get out there and then. There's no perfect moment to get out. And unfortunately, some people do. They wait too long until they can't get out and something really bad happens um and I know it might it sounds a lot easier than it is to do and I totally understand that um every situation is different but please please get out as soon as you have that gut feeling something is wrong get out get away get your children away get yourself away get somewhere safe and talk to somebody you trust about this gut feeling that you know that has been in your life for a very long time 
just honestly listen to this gut feeling. It will save you in the long run. And again, easier said than done. I understand that I've been there. Again, not all situations are the same. But honestly, listen to that gut of yours that says, you know, that gut feeling that says, get get the fuck out. Listen to that. Um, what's an innocent mistake you made that had uh, dramatic consequences? Okay, so this one's a little bit, like, cheesy. Well, not cheesy, but... So, like, I used to work as, like, kind of, like, a nanny and a home care, like, taker. Like, I did all the cleaning, the cooking, all of it. I took care of the kids and everything. And there was this one afternoon where, um, like, my boss, so the mother of the kids that I was uh, looking after, um, went out and I was in charge of these kids and the friends came over and stuff and they, you know, they were playing video games and stuff and then they went outside to play and stuff and like they were older so I wasn't like, I didn't have to handhold them. Like I watched from a distance, right, to make sure they were safe and whatnot. And the friend left and then the, the boy who was left, um, he was showing me, um, whatever, a, a, ga a math game on his tablet or whatever and he's like you know this is actually like like I was learning from him and my boss came home and she was like really fucking pissed that he was on his technology and I'm like well they were outside and stuff like it, this is like an educational thing you were showing me like something that like you know I could use or whatever like honestly it was like a, a range of like different things it was pretty cool and you got like tokens or whatever and she got like extremely pissed and, like, she brought me downstairs into the basement. She was doing laundry. And she, like, laced into me saying, like, I needed to do better. Like, this is... She didn't pay me for them to be on their technology. And I was like, well, it's a math game. Like, he he was, like, showing me. Like, it was literally two seconds he was just showing me. Like, you just walked in at that time. Like, I was trying to explain it. She's like, well, you need to do better. I'm like, well, I clean the house and stuff. She's like, well, that's not the point. Like, you have to do, like, better as, like, a human being. And as a person of taking care of these kids. Um... And, like, from that moment on, she kind of, like, made my life hell. Um, like, it wasn't a good, healthy environment. Like, I was working, like, 18 hours a day, five days a week. Um, and I just started doing a lot more work than I signed up for. And, like, she would rip my ass at any turn. Um, like... And, like, any little thing that, like, went wrong or, like, the kids made a mistake, of course, like, I would get blamed for it. And, like, she would cut my pay by, like, a lot. Um, she wasn't even paying me, like, the, um, what is it? Like, you, by law, you have to pay people a certain amount or unless it's, like, chi not child labor, but, like, basically slavery. And I hate to throw that word around, but basically I was told by the government she was treating me like a slave, which, again, I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but, like, it was a whole long fucking process I had to go through after I left the job and whatnot. Like, she wouldn't let me leave, and it, it was just a whole shit show of stuff. So, like, but, like, that innocent, like, little thing that wasn't, like, really wrong or anything, um, like, it wasn't even, like, a mistake, like... I guess like it was just a whole chain of events that she made very dramatic through like an innocent little it wasn't even a mistake it was just like that happened um also there was like two two other things so she got like this new stove in and like I was in charge of cooking and stuff because she just couldn't um and like like one of her kids um was like helping me cook like I was teaching them how to cook and stuff and they moved the pot and it like scraped I was like oh like it, it was like it was like it was really weird because like these pots weren't supposed to scrape or anything but they did so like I didn't like even pay like any attention to it and like I told her, I'm like, oh, yeah, there was a scratch. Like, I changed the whole thing. Like, that changed. I told her the whole situation, and she got, like, extremely pissed at me and took, like, $400 out of my pay. And it turned out the week after, her mother came down 
and was doing all this cooking and stuff and like she scraped the shit out of her stove and she was fine with it. So like it wasn't even like it was like a simple mistake. It was very dramatic. Like of course I paid for it. Like it was four hundred dollars out of my paycheck. But like it was very dramatic and stuff and it was unnecessary, but whatever. And then there was this other time well, I wasn't even aware of this. That which wasn't even like my mistake. Um so the night before the kids um like spilt some milk. So like I cleaned out the fridge and the grandfather was over at the time. And like I like I was so like on pins and needles the whole time. Cause like every little mistake she like chewed my ass out so for. So I asked the grandfather to like search the fridge, make sure like I cleaned it because I didn't want to make a big deal out of it. And so when she got to the house, I told her, like milk was spilled, I checked the fridge, I cleaned it. Your father checked the fridge and he vouched for me. He's like, yeah, I checked the fridge. And then the next morning, like I could smell this like burning. I'm like, what, 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 like, what's this burning? So like I checked the fridge, I'm like this, whatever. So I checked everything. She stayed behind. She didn't go to work. She's like, well, we have to figure this out. Lo and behold, um, I, something happened that evening after I went downstairs to where I was staying and like more milk got spilt but nobody cleaned it up um and so it was like sitting there and I got in and like and apparently I it was my fault like oh like I needed to be more careful like oh I needed to check like I'm like I didn't even know that this happened so like all these like little like I guess mistakes was like blown out of proportion and so like I definitely had to get out of that situation because like it was just living hell guys like just it was just little things that got blown into very dramatic things and was not good for my health um but yeah next question even though you had a horrible experience in the past do you still think of the abuser um and miss them or think about them um so I try not to think about them. Um, I know I'd like, I don't purposely sit down in a corner somewhere and like think about them. It's like little things that might happen or like that might make me think of them. So like I was going, for example, for I was, I was going through my storage lock and I was organizing it. I mean, going through all these bins and stuff and I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, my yearbooks. I'm like, this is fucking, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I opened just one of them and one of them like, my ex like basically said you're the best I love you babe and like that kind of triggered a, like a certain event so it's like it's not like I purposely think about them it's just like sometimes I get triggered into thinking about situations and what happened and you know how it all unfolded and stuff and when I talk about it on these videos I don't get triggered guys it's not a big deal like it doesn't bother me talking about it it used to but not now um it used to bother me because the whole fact is, like, I didn't really process it before. But now that I have processed it, um, like, it doesn't bother me. Going back and thinking about these events and stuff that happened, you know, yes, it kind of makes me think about them. But, like, after the video's done and, like, after I po post it out, like, I don't sit there and ponder about them. I, um, I tend not to think about them. Again, like on like I don't sit out a day to time to think about them or whatnot no it's just like sometimes in passing yeah like they pop into my mind but then it's just like you know when my depression and anxiety happen you know I I send I sometimes overthink things um about the whole situation of stuff that I went through but you know I've kind of learned to like calm down and like not over over process everything but no, I don't, like, honestly sit down and just think about them. Um, what do you, what do people automat, what do you think people automatically assume about you when they look at you? Oh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> there's many things 
Like, I hope they, they think that I'm a nice person just by looking at me because I don't, like, walk around, like, with death glares or whatever. But I, I hope that people think that I look like a nice human being enough to, like, approach and have a conversation with. Of course, now it's different because everybody's wearing masks. Um, and it's, like, you basically have to talk with your eyes. Like, if you're not verbally talking to somebody, you have to, like, communicate with your eyes to let them know that you're not, like, you know, a crazy person behind the mask. Um, but yeah, it, it's really hard now because of people wearing masks. You can't really tell, you know, people's facial expressions. But I hope, like, before <laughs> masks, you know, people thought that I was an okay person to, you know, come and talk with. Um, looking back on your life, what would you have done that has given... What have you done that has given you the most satisfaction? <sighs> um. Hmm. Oh, God. Uh, um. Sorry, that was a lot of moaning and groaning. Um. I would probably say writing my book, not that it has been published yet, that gave me a great sense of satis satisfaction, there we go, of just something that I felt needed and I wanted to do, right? So just, even though it hasn't been published, I still find that very satisfaction. No? Me? Something. <laughs> it's very s satisfying that I did that. Um, also, Starting my Never Give Up community page on Facebook, that has been very satisfying of, like, seeing the community grow and people come together, you know, and just hang out. People can go to one another. I love seeing that. That's very satisfying. And, um, you know, starting up this YouTube channel and kind of reaching out and telling different things and uh, sharing my experiences and you know, seeing people finally reach out and feel like they could comment and ask questions and participate. And I really feel like that's very satisfying to see that people are comfortable enough to, you know, start asking questions. What is the biggest lie you told yourself? Oh, probably that I am okay when I wasn't okay. That That is honestly probably the one of the biggest things is like telling myself I was okay when I wasn't. And also just, like, beating myself up, thinking that, like, I was this horrible human being that everybody was, like, thing calling me and stuff. Like, I really started to, like, internalize that and, like, blame myself and stuff. And I think that's the biggest lie I told myself, that, like, it was my fault, you know? And that's just, you know, that, that was really tough. And that, of course, started a whole chain of events. But, yeah, I think, honestly, that was one of the biggest lies I told myself. That, you know, it was my fault that I asked for it. Um, that I'm okay, right? Uh, it was very tough. And, like, I felt like I had to do that at that time. That, of course, it was my fault. Like, I actually felt that. Um, but, I mean, it wasn't. You know, um, I, I learned that. <laughs> um, years after and kind of like processing everything. Um, but yeah, learning from that is a really, um, interesting experience that I experienced. It was tough and it was hard to do, but I, you know, had to kind of push on through that and work, work through that. On to some other questions. <coughs> I'll just do a few more and then I'll start gathering up them again and um yeah we'll go from there watching your get to know me video um one of the questions I'm being, I see that you like a lot of uh fiction why is that honestly that's a good question like I do like a lot of fiction and fantasy stories. So like The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, Harry Potter, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, um, all of that. Like I honestly, there's some really good life lessons in that. And it's very it's told in very different stages of life, right? So there's like teamwork and different 
um, backgrounds coming together to work as one. And yes, they might have started off as enemies, but then they realized that they w could work together and be friends. And it it's very interesting of, yes, there's villain and darkness in it, but also there's light and you can fight through it and come out stronger, you know, as a person, as a team, as a family. I thoroughly enjoy that. And it's it it's a place to escape, like... You know, everybody has that one place that they want to escape to. And I really find that in, yeah, fantasy and fiction place, especially in, like, reading and shows and stuff, a lot of it is made up, right? And that's kind of, like, everybody's kind of, like, escape of getting out there and just, like, exploring other worlds without, you know, leaving your room or your basement uh, or your living room or wherever you're watching it. And just kind of experience different things and seeing through different eyes, which is a long-winded thing. But yeah, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy that. Uh, what was your favorite subject going through years of schooling? Okay, so this is interesting. Um, for me, it was different st uh, stages. <laughs> so for like elementary, so from like kindergarten to grade six, I would say definitely English that was that was my thing that was like you know where I wrote and stuff I was my strong suit middle school definitely was history I loved starting to dive into history um high school was a mixture of um child care English history law I loved taking law that was one of my all-time favorite classes that I took was law. Um, you know, even through all the bullshit that I had to go through, and I'm calling it bullshit because it was, um, escaping into those classes and just kind of like blowing out all the, blowing out all the bullshit was just a really good way and of putting all my time and effort and focus into school work, which sounds shitty because for a while there, my grades were slipping. I'm not going to lie. But come the end, I was just like, yeah, powerhouse through this. Let's go. Um, but law was, law was it. Um, through my colleges, all the way up till now, I honestly loved my writing class that I took. Um, again, you know, that's kind of my strong suit. Um, uh, my child care courses were, I mean, they were okay, but they weren't my favorite. Going out into field, oh god. You know, I have the worst luck with shit, but anyways, um, I had some really shitty experiences and then I had some really good experiences. Um, and now just doing like my courses for what I want to do in life, um, I'm kind of finding my, my sea legs as it were, I guess, of for this, where I'm going into this area and it's a lot of hard work, but I think it's going to pay off. Um, yes. <clears throat> What's your favorite animal? Um, oh, uh, huh. Well, definitely dogs, because I'm a dog person. Um, wolves, of course, because, hello, big wolf for you there. Um, I like eagles. Um, I like, m like, all animals. Like, I I'm a very, like, animal-loving person, um, I know there's, like, some, like, creatures and animals out there that are, like, people don't like. I mean, I used to be afraid of snakes. Uh, that's just because I had some weird experiences with snakes. But then, like, I got okay with them. I mean, they still, like, oh my god, like, if I see one, I, like, I, you know, the initial freak out. And, you know, you don't want to get too close because, again, you don't know what type of snake it is. But, like, I don't, like, run screaming in circles. Like, I'm not that type of person. Um, but yeah, like, you know, in spiders, you know, the initial shock, of, like, if you see one trips me out, if I see, like, I forget what it's called, silverfish, I think it is, with the ones with all the legs, it, ugh, they, they kind of creep me out, but they don't scare me. But yeah, like, I'm, I like all animals, but yeah, um, I have two Yorkies, and I have a fur niece that is a mixture of many dogs, um, so... A German Shepherd and Akita mix. So that's... She's a big dog. 
um, yeah, but I'm an, I'm an animal, animal lover, but I'm also not to the extreme of activism of, like, don't eat meat, um, which I know sounds terrible, but I like bacon and burgers and stuff, and I know, um, like, my sister-in-law and my brother now, they are kind of somewhat vegetarian, they only eat fish and chicken, I do believe, everything else is off the table, so it's like part vegetarian, I don't know, but they're very into like the whole, <sighs> um, you know, eating certain meats is bad for you. So, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I honestly respect and love all animals, but, um, yeah, you guys, I'm going to leave it there. Two long ass videos. I hope this answers questions. Always feel free to leave more questions. I'll either answer them in the comments or throw them in videos. Um, but sure. For sure, thank you for all the questions and all the love and support. It means the world to me, guys. I'm just glad that you guys are feeling comfortable enough to start asking questions. And I can't wait to see where the world take... Ro ro what? What am I saying? Road and world take us. There we go. I can't wait to see where it takes us, guys. Anyways, remember, never give up. Always keep fighting. You're enough and you're very, very much loved. Until the next video, guys. I love you, stay safe, and we will talk soon. Bye, guys.